been two weeks to the day that the uh, mast was in the mandrel. I took it off the mandrel today. I figured it's not going to cure any harder than, than that. Uh, we had those uh, some good uh, warm days and but now we're back to typical Pacific Northwest Seattle area weather in May and June where it's cold and clammy and overcast and I can't wait to get the hell out of here after 50 some years living in the Pacific Northwest, uh, I need to move to the east of the mountains. But uh, a little something on the side here. I had some tent poles that were causing me some grief, and they were from a stretched domicile uh, tent from, from uh, Sierra Designs, and I got it years and years ago. Uh, it was the only tent I ever found that was totally freestanding that didn't need a single peg. You could set it up on concrete and uh, the rain fly would work and it had a bow out in the front to keep the rain off the entrance. So absolutely no stakes. Um, so you'd be on pure rock and that's why I got it because I did a lot of sea kayaking in some places uh, there wasn't any place to jab a, poke, a peg into the ground. But over the years the uh, tubing um, started developing some cracks you know, on the ends here, uh, well, on, on these ends, they'll split out from where they're getting jammed into the other section. So uh, I wanted to save my tent because I couldn't find anything online uh, other than, you know, like to replace it would be like about $600, $700 to replace that tent. And so I thought, well, there must be some way to do this. And um, so I was over at my Do It Hardware Center and uh, the one that I go to. I'm, I'm thinking of getting a Get Up, Get To it's, uh, action cam. It's kind of like the, it does as well as a GoPro Black, but you know, for 160 bucks. Uh, actually, with, you know, you can get it cheaper. But I was um, over there looking around and I found these um, ferrules. And here's a full length one here. And then I had this one I cut off and put on the other end. And then I cut some more in the middle. This one, this tube here is split from end to end. But I was able to find some uh, uh, tubing that was the, the same size as the ferrules on the end. And I lined, cut it down to where it would fit inside this tube. Uh, it's not as stiff as this gold one was, but with it inside to maintain the roundness and then these little uh, slide on, uh, they're eight millimeter holes. So the tubes are eight millimeters. So um, I'm assuming they're either made overseas or they're made by somebody that didn't want anybody to fix them in this country. So, and so I got that and this one was in the middle. Uh, so I took it and took it down and put it on the end so it'll be down in a straighter section. But just this morning I had to go over and I found a 5 16 inch uh, nylon uh, bolt. It was about, I don't know, an inch long. And I cut the head off and then um, jammed it in, and, but I had to uh, file down the threads off. So now it's, it's a match for the, the other end here. So. But just wanted to let you know that some of these things can be fixed. But right now I'm going to go in on the mast and I've got a section of two inch tape that will do two full wraps on the tube. I'm going to wet this out another way. Normally I'll take a piece of visqueen. Instead of wrapping it inside and, and, and wetting it out in place, I'll just mix up the epoxy and wet this out and then put it inside. So let me move the camera around so I get that. And I want to uh, seal off the upper end too. I'll go ahead and give the uh, tube a, a pre-wetting. Get some on the ends here too. This is this is a raw cut. Uh, 
Okay, we'll go down and do the tape. And we'll put a little bit out here on the tape to get it pre-wet. Stay away from the end so you don't get them all frizzled out. Even though probably the one that could be on the inside, you could put a little bit of shipping tape on the end. Selvage wants to stay a little dry. Okay, now I'll peel that off, off camera, and we'll come up back when I'm jamming it in the hole. Okay, I got my tape on. Start sliding it in. <laughs> well, I think I can slide it in there. Might have been easier to have wetted it out in place. Just use your finger to roll it over on. Get back there. Okay. I think maybe it might have been <laughs> easier to wet it out in place. Probably didn't have to do this, but I wanted to add a little bit of extra layer to the inside to um, give a little more strength. Then we'll go against this roll this way, we'll go against it. And there. Put a little bit on the raggedy edge. I'll let that be. I'll sand that off later. And I got enough that I can go ahead and do the other end. Got it to where a, uh, I'll show you a mi minute later. Uh, I've got a cap, a new plastic uh, PVC cap that fits over this just perfectly. Okay, I got this. took it outside and reversed it in for end. So now I can go ahead and Paint it on, let it soak in. And this will cure overnight, and I'll come out and start painting tomorrow. Put on a couple layers of primer, and then we'll. got some leftover LPU paint I'm going to paint it with. 
give it that yachty quality. I put this much time into it, I might as well use a good quality paint to finish it off. I've been happy with the um, Ultra Cover um, um, Rust Williams primer, but I haven't been really happy with their paints. It just doesn't seem to hold up, so. So I'll go back to spending some more money and get the LPU from System 3. So. I just checked the inside diameter with my El Cheapo China gauge, and then the outside is a, a two inch, two inch cap, which is perfect. I'll be able to change out the one I've got now for the aluminum mass, the two inch aluminum mass, and put this one on. But I found some, uh, you can just barely see it in there, I found some two inch outside diameter, uh, it's like really thin wall ABS uh, gray plastic pipe. Uh, I don't know where I got it or what it was actually used for, but I've got another section I use, uh, you've seen in some of my other videos where I uh, use the, uh, um, use it and the mass partner to locate where the cup goes with a, a level in the bottom of the hole. So I've got that part done. And uh, even with the extra uh, two layers of glass tape in here, this will give me a, a nice hard bottom in order to protect the, the edge of the glass. So let's go to the other end. Well, this one is in, the small end is all finished off. And I'll square it up and smooth it out. I need something about an inch and an eighth to jam in there. Let's see if I can find anything. It'd be nice to put a plug in here. I may have to end up using uh, some foam, high density foam. Yeah, it looks like the only thing I've got to fit is the handle off one of my files. <laughs> That starts making it look good if I tap it in, you know, it'd be a nice tight fit, but it makes it kind of look funny, doesn't it? <laughs> Gives me an idea. Maybe I can make something out of wood on my lathe. Well, I know what the plug diameter I need and what I can use. Maybe just turn a piece of wood. It might even make it longer than uh, normal. I've got it all set up now to... Um, paint so let me get the uh, primer out and put a coat of paint on it or primer on it and we'll come back after I get that done the first coat well I have the first coat of primer on and it's looking pretty good looking fairly smooth I was afraid that it wouldn't but uh, I guess maybe we'll see what happens when we get the white paint on there mm -hmm. 